Good evening, everyone. My name is Amy Kornbeis, and I'm the Board Development Chair of United Hatsala. Tonight, it is my honor to introduce to you Joel and Adele Sandberg. Ladies and gentlemen, they may look and walk and talk like normal human beings. Don't let that fool you. Joel and Adele are a superhero couple. They were married at Temple Bethel in Great Neck, New York by Rabbi Rudin, who happens to be the very same rabbi who married my husband Harlan and I. So I promise you they were off to a good start. Joel is an accomplished ophthalmologist who graduated from John Hopkins University and spent a year at Israeli Hospital establishing a cancer chemotherapy program. He is also a voluntary professor at the University of Miami School of Medicine. Adele became an English teacher and went on to have three amazing children, Cheryl, David, and Michelle, all of whom are here tonight with their children, which is a testament to how close the Sandberg family is. And as we all know, great kids come from great parents. Two words that come to mind in describing Joel and Adele are brave and resilient. I guess that it is what got them through being interrogated behind the Iron Curtain as they were aiding Soviet Jews with Sharansky. From 1970 to 1980, Joel and Adele were fighting for the rights of Soviet Jews to immigrate to Israel. At home, Adele and Joel were community activists and cared so deeply that they turned their house kosher so that every Jew could feel comfortable there. And I promise you, that through the years, many people walk through the door to receive their counsel. In 2010, Adele founded the Earpiece Foundation to create awareness around the problem of noise-induced hearing loss and motivate young people to take measures to protect their hearing. As the president and founder of the Earpiece Foundation, along with her volunteers, she has been actively educating students and training teachers about the dangers of loud sound. When Ellie Beer got sick with COVID in Miami, Joel served as his medical advocate, and I firmly believe he is the reason why Ellie is alive today. Joel spoke to Ellie's doctors daily, reviewing his data and then relaying the information to Ellie's wife, Giddy, and the Hot Solid team several times a day. Joel was the one that suggested that the doctors try the experimental stem cell treatment. He was the first patient in Miami to receive this treatment, which was the key to his recovery. As Mark Gerson wisely said, Joel was Ellie's guardian angel. Then, when the Surfside tragedy occurred, Adele was the heartbeat of the Hatsala team that came and worked on the ground with survivors and their families, and also the families of those who lost loved ones. Adele and I have worked side by side to create the United Hatsala Women's Initiative, and all I can say is Adele, you complete me. I cannot imagine a better partner for a better cause. As board members, Joel and Adele's devotion to United Hot Sala is incomparable. They have donated AmbuCycles, sponsored medics, sponsored courses, they have donated days of life saving in honor of cousins, friends, children, and grandchildren. The time and the love they have given Hatzala is the very reason we are here today. And now, please look at the video. I'm from Flushing, New York. I grew up in Great Neck, New York. 
my cousin Herbie was his close friend, and so Herbie fixed us up, and we've now been married 56 years. It gets better every year. So we have three children, and they are all wonderful. Two of our children are doctors, Michelle and David, and then, of course, Cheryl works at Facebook. We moved around a lot, and we went to Israel for a year where I set up a chemotherapy unit at the big government hospital, Tel HaShomer, now Sheba Medical Center. That's what got us started in Jewish causes, working for Jewish survival. In the 1970s, Soviet Jews were being oppressed. If a Jewish family was in trouble, they would be courageous enough to apply for an exit visa. And if they applied, they would be refused. And then they would be called a refusenik. Well, it was very dangerous because if you were a refusenik, you could be arrested, you could be sent to a psychiatric ward, you could be killed. I was so influenced by the Holocaust. So when I heard that there were three million Jews stuck inside the Soviet Union being oppressed, I knew that we had to help. So we helped found the South Florida Conference on Soviet Jury. We worked almost a 20-year effort. We worked with Congress. We actually went to the Soviet Union. We were up against the most powerful, enormous, oppressive, totalitarian regime. But in the end, millions of Jews got out of Russia. It was like a miracle. And a million Jews were able to emigrate to Israel. We Soviet Jews could never succeed in our struggle of winning our freedom. My friends and comrades in arms joined Adele Sandberg. We were the leaders of this struggle in Southern Florida. They were coming to us. We were making sure that none of the names of the refusing is forgotten. Thank you, John and Adele, for this long time friendship and comradeship in arms. Four or five years ago, we met Ellie Beer on a plane. I was sitting next to this guy that was dictating the entire flight. When we landed, I asked him, why were you dictating? So he said that he runs a nonprofit in Israel that saves lives, United Hatzalah. So now we really wanted to talk to him. So we invited him to go into the city with us and uh, where he was going, and we uh, met him for breakfast the next morning. The next morning, he arrived at our hotel on an ambucycle. And that's when he told us that United Hatzalah has 6,000 volunteers, and they never charge. And Eli is so charming and so persuasive that by the time he left, we had donated an ambulance. I'm a voluntary professor at the University of Miami Medical School. And so when Ellie was hospitalized with COVID very early in the pandemic, I was privileged to be his healthcare proxy and his advocate. Ellie was terribly sick. He had been on a ventilator for 21 days, but Joel never gave up. He found an experimental protocol. And in one day, he recovered after they started that treatment. I was just privileged to be his healthcare proxy and advocate and uh, keep Ellie Beer and Giddy and his 6,000 volunteers doing their job. Two summers ago, we were in Israel with Cheryl and Tom and their family. We took them to the United Hatzalah Communication Center in Jerusalem. We were all blown away by the high-tech efficiency and particularly by the duplicate system in the basement bomb shelter and by the passion of the volunteers. And that's where we met Giddy Beer. Giddy was the founder of the women's unit. It's been very successful. They've already trained a thousand female medics in Israel. So now we have the Women's Initiative here in the United States. And our job is to raise the money so that we can underwrite the training of thousands more. You know, Cheryl has always been an advocate for women. 
so now she is joining us in supporting the women's unit in Israel and we're very, very proud of her. United Atzala had two phases. The first phase of starting the organization and growing it, and then the phase where we met the Sandbergs. They are incredible people who are changing this organization for many, many years to come. So I want to thank them for all their involvement, for saving my life, and for saving thousands and thousands of lives here in Israel through United Hatzalah. Joel and Adele, the most incredible people that I think I've met in my life, whether it's by giving an ambulance that will save lives, ambicycles, support across the board with our board members, our partners, and of course our volunteers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your friendship. For my 75th birthday, they sponsored a day of life-saving for me, and I had no idea what that meant until I got the list of the people that were saved as a result of what they had done. It was incredible to me. They are pillars of our community who work really hard to make this world a better place. As a physician, and someone who is passionate about Israel and Jewish survival. I love United Hatzalah. United Hatzalah brings together Christians, Muslims, Jews, Orthodox, secular people who could be enemies, and they are working together. This is, to me, a blueprint for world peace. It's very humbling to be honored because the volunteers are the ones who drop everything and run out to save lives. And when we support them, it means we're part of all the mitzvahs that they do every day. Just leave it with me. Wait, wait, before. So, first of all, welcome Mark Gerson, chairman and co founder of United Hatzalah. And, um, what? Okay. Um, we have a special award for you, and I know you're not looking for any more tchotchkes, <laughs> but you're getting another tchotchke from Mark and Erica. Thank you. All right. So this is for you, for all the work you do for United Atella day and day, every day and night for the organization to save more lives. So this is for you. Thank you very much, Mark. But we have a very special surprise. Adele and Joel, this is one of 10 pieces created in the world for United Atella, and we are so excited to present and to you tonight. And donated. And donated. and donated, and we're so excited to present it to you tonight. I would like to ask Emil Mimran and Geffen Gallery owner of Jerusalem, Uri Fedida, to please present Come here. this gift. This is Emil, my good friend, sponsored it. And we have a very special artist. Look at it from here. Look at this from here. You see the butterflies are the lives we save. And this was an idea that Emil did while I was sick in the hospital. He didn't know what to do. All the shops were closed. And he went around in Jerusalem looking for something to do for me. And he went to this artist who made next under the Waldorf, right? That's where you are? Under the Waldorf in Jerusalem. And he asked him to create this piece. And after he made it, and it came out so beautiful, um, he made 10 of them. So we want to give you... Um, 
nine out of ten. One he kept for himself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Jolanit, thank you very much. You could learn more. We're going to have it on our website. This is a very special piece. Nambi Seckle. Picture. Come to Jerusalem, visit his art gallery. Please welcome Rabbi Erica Gerson. Good evening. I am so honored to introduce this evening's keynote speaker, Cheryl Sandberg. Cheryl is yeah, you can let's pause. <laughs> Cheryl is well known for her outstanding professional accomplishments. She's the chief operating officer at Meta Platforms and the former vice president of global online sales and operations at Google. Prior to that, she served as Chief of Staff for the United States Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Lauren Summers. In all of these roles, her impact has been transformative, to say the least. In addition to Cheryl's extraordinary professional achievements, she has made it her life's mission to uplift and inspire others. And I think we've heard tonight where she get that, gets that from. After tragically losing her husband, Cheryl penned the best-selling book, Option B, to help others through their grief. And her first book, Lean In, also a bestseller, has empowered women all over the world to achieve their ambitions. Cheryl is a tireless advocate for women in leadership roles and generously funds the Lean In organization, which makes change in the world. As all of you now know, if you didn't already, Cheryl is the daughter of our beloved United Hatsala board members, Dr. Joel and Adele Sandberg. <laughs> Cheryl dedicated her book, Lean In, to them, writing, to my parents for raising me to believe that anything was possible. Today, Cheryl is taking on her parents' favorite organization and mission, United Hatzalah of Israel, and she is making a commitment, a significant commitment to saving lives. Cheryl, you are well known for encouraging women to lean in, raise a hand, take on leadership, and that is exactly what the female responders of United Hatzalah do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Cheryl, on behalf of the United Hatzalah family, thank you for inspiring women everywhere to reach our full potential. Thank you for sharing your time with us this evening, and thank you for joining us as a partner in life-saving through your sponsorship of the Women's Unit. Please join me now in welcoming our keynote speaker, Cheryl Sandberg. There you are. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. So thank you, Erica, for that overly generous introduction. Lyndon Johnson, when he used to get one of those, would say, I wish my parents were here. My father would have appreciated that, and my mother would have believed it. <laughs> well, my parents are here, and neither one of them believed it, but I bet they both appreciate it. Erica, I join everyone here in thanking you and appreciating you and your husband, Mark, for your leadership of this organization, which is a core part of its strength. I'm going to start tonight with three stories. Tuesday morning last August, two-year-old Noam Levy was found in his pool. He was not breathing. He was unconscious. He had no pulse. United Hatsala EMTs arrived in seconds and performed CPR, and he started breathing again. He was airlifted to the hospital in critical condition but alive. 
And had he waited for an ambulance, no one would not have survived. This is Rania Abu Shaban from East Jerusalem. When she was a child, her grandfather had a stroke and he passed away before help, help, help could arrive. So she wanted to learn how to save lives. So she trained to become a volunteer medic with United Hatzalah. She's now earning her PhD in medical systems administration. She's the first woman in her entire family to get a higher education. And when she drives an ambulance, she is the first Muslim woman in East Jerusalem to do so. She said that the training from United Hatzalah showed her what she could do. In her words, a PhD is the beginning of my future life, a way to help the world and humanity in honor of my grandfather. Three years ago tonight, Amy Benishai, who's here tonight, was visiting Israel with her husband, Jack. This is her granddaughter, who had 104 and had a seizure and was unconscious. The first United Hatzalah volunteer who arrived was a Muslim volunteer. And Amy was worried about that, and she asked for a Jewish volunteer instead. And she was told, all of our volunteers are well-trained. And then two Jewish volunteers arrived. They saved her life, her granddaughter's life. But it was that Muslim volunteer who stayed at the hospital with her granddaughter many hours after everyone else had left. And as Amy told us and allowed us to share this story tonight, she had spent her whole life viewing Arabs as the enemy, as a threat to her family, but she no longer could. They saved her grandfather's life, but they transformed her. These three stories get to the very heart of what United Hatzalah does, founded on a belief that this incredible man, Eli Beer, had that no one should die waiting for an ambulance when help could be right around the corner. This organization was started when he was just 16 years old. Today, 6,000 volunteer medics respond to 1,800 emergency calls every day with an average response time of three minutes across Israel, 90 seconds in major cities, which compares to an ambulance response time on average of 12 to 15 minutes. United Hatzalah has treated over 5 million people, saved thousands of lives. And as someone who knows very firsthand the real devastation when someone's life is not saved, I know the tragedy that these families are spared by this organization. But United Hatzalah does not just save lives, it changes lives. United Hatzalah empowers women. 1,100 of those volunteers are females. And the most active female medics average 100 calls per month, per month. Now, many of these women grow up in communities and live in communities where they face very significant pressure not to work outside their homes. But then they become a volunteer medic, and they do work outside their homes, and they do the important work of saving lives. And then it inspires them so often to get professional training, often in the medical field, it shows them, it shows their husbands, it shows their communities what they can do. And they can pursue their dreams, step into leadership roles, and have more power in their homes and communities. It shows their daughters and their sons what they are capable of. Men have run the world for a really long time, and I'm not sure it's going that well. United Hatzala is part of the long march to equality. United Hatzala also builds community. There are so many things that divide us. Religion, sex within religion, politics, our beliefs. But there is something so much more important that unites us, and that is the sanctity of human life. United Hatzalah transcends divisions and expands who people consider part of their community. As we work together to save lives, 
we find our common humanity. I got to see all of this firsthand when I visited the United Hatsala headquarters with my family two summers ago. I was blown away. And I expected to be impressed, but I was blown away. I was blown away by the passion that Ellie Beer has. I am here tonight because Ellie was randomly sitting next to my parents on an airplane. And he did what he always does, which is he took every opportunity to build support for his organization. But I got to see him with his leadership teams. And it was one of the great examples of true leadership I have ever seen. I was blown away by United Hatsala's technology. And that's an area where maybe I'm not so easily impressed. But I was. Because United Hatsala has built the technology to identify the closest volunteer for any emergency. They get there faster the same way your Uber driver gets there faster because it's a distributed model. But he thought of this long before organizations like Uber thought of distributing work in this way. I was impressed and grateful for how United Hatsala is using Facebook. 90% of the United Hatsala volunteers find United Hatsala on Facebook or Instagram. They are huge users of WhatsApp to connect with supporters, using WhatsApp to give live emergency updates throughout the day. And as Ellie told me, the best publicity they ever got was when popular blogger Nusain, sorry, Nusir Hassan launched a video on Facebook about Ellie, which is now the most widely viewed video about any Israeli nonprofit and has been viewed 47 million times. At Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook, that's our mission. Our mission is to help people connect and share, help people come together, and United Hatsala is a great example of what is possible. When I visited the headquarters, I was blown away by the innovation. They developed the Ambu cycle, which never gets stuck in traffic. And coming soon are foldable cars, the first of their kind. I was blown away by the drive for efficiency. Anyone who's ever worked with Michael Brown, as I got to on this night, knows how efficient this organization is. And I was blown away by their drive to share their technology with anyone in the world who wants it, regardless of what community they're for. In tech, we call that open source. Everyone here tonight is a key part of this community. The board and the executive committee cover 100% of the operating costs. That means that every dollar any donor gives goes to purchase equipment and train volunteers. The money raised tonight and all year long helps United Hatsala respond to all calls and never charge a patient. I'm so grateful to all of you, including our chair, Tila Falik, for your commitment because none of this happens without everyone here tonight. And I really want us to applaud all of you. For me, it's so natural for my parents to be part of this community. I come from a good Jewish family. Children are supposed to be doctors. It was passed down through the generations. My grandmother had two sons, my father and his brother. She had about 40 pictures in total of their childhood, and then about 400 pictures of his med school, act, med school graduation. I am the black sheep in my family, the only child of Adele and Joel Sandberg not to become a doctor. But my parents have shown me, and my siblings, David and Michelle, and all of our spouses, and all of their grandchildren who are here tonight, what it means to have a commitment to make the world a better place. It runs through the stories of our family. My mother's grandmother was very poor, grandma mom, and she had a seduka can. And she put it on the table. And when things were good, she'd say, let's put some cans into the seduka box. And when things were bad, she would say, someone else is worse off. Let's put some coins in this, into the seduka box. It ran through our childhood. As you already heard tonight, my parents worked tirelessly helping Soviet Jews and dissidents escaped the tyranny of the then Soviet Union. They worked with activists all around the world, from grassroots to the highest corridors of power. They marched, they protested, they demonstrated, often with the three of us on their shoulders. My mother co-edited 15 books, 
stories of refuseniks. And the result of their and so many other people's work is two million Jews emigrated from the Soviet Union. A million of those made Aliyah to Israel. And many of their children are now United Hatzalah volunteers. Today, my parents work for United Hatzalah with that same passion they worked decades ago for Soviet Jews. It is amazing to have parents who are always there as parents, as grandparents, through the good, through the bad. They live full and rich lives, but their lives are only complete when they are doing for others. Mom and Dad, I know I'm the kid, so maybe not my place, but I am so proud of you tonight and always. for your work with the great Amy and Daniel David, the great Giddy Beer, founder of the Women's Division, to grow the women's unit in Israel with a goal of doubling the number of female medics so that those women can save lives, empower themselves and other women, and build community. I grew up with the, fa with the phrase tikkun olam. As Jews, we are called upon to help others and repair the world. If there's one organization that does this, it is United Hatzalah. And I'm so grateful to all of you here tonight for making this possible. And now, because it's better to see than to hear, I get to share with you the amazing story of one of the female medics. I'm a nursery teacher. I was born in Honduras in 1982, and I came to Israel in 2002. In Atzala, I am a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week, 365-day-a-year volunteer. It has been my lifelong dream to be able to work as anything that would involve saving lives. <laughs> I can be cooking, I can be in the middle of the shower and I will get a call and I will just grab my stuff, my shoes on my hands, run in the car and get there as fast as I can. The faster you get there, the faster you're going to be able to save a person in a crisis. Our goal in United Atzala is to get there to the emergency in 90 seconds. I had a drive to save people 17 months ago, but that drive has become a lot more, a lot higher, if I can say that, because I, I had my own trauma and I couldn't save my brother. So, I was trying to save other people. I was there too late. I know he's looking down on me. And I know he's giving me his hand and his power and energy for me to keep on and to be there for other people. Someone's at the door. אני ורודי סבידן, מוסלמית, בת 24, מכפר הערמשי, כפר בדואי. מהבטן. ורוד היא בחורה שעבדה איתנו בגן, והיא נחנקה לי, והייתה שמונה חודשים בהיריון עם הקטנצ'יק החמוד הזה. ומיד שראיתי שחנוכה עם הידיים שלה בצוואר, קפצתי עליה, 
ועשיתי לה לחיצות בבטן. לא יכלתי לנשום, זה לא לדבר אפילו. אם ג'ניפר לא הייתה שם, זה היה אסון. היא הצילה אותי, הצילה את התינוק שלי. אמא, אני חושבת שאת הגיבורה הכי טובה. ג'ני, תודה שהצלת אותי ואת יואן ביום הזה, מזל שהיית, ותודה. Now it's my honor and privilege to introduce Jennifer Starkman Atia. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm crying already. I'm so honored to be here today and I'm so happy to be here and be part of this amazing organization called United Atala and part of my family too now. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. And now I get to introduce someone who needs absolutely no introduction. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Ellie to the stage. <laughs> 